Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is time to start another long-term reading vlog project and I did a poll on my YouTube community tab to ask should I do it on Sarah Winman or should I do it on Emily St. John Mandel? And the winner was Emily St. John Mandel, so I'm really excited to read her work from beginning to end up to this point. I have before read Station Eleven, but that's the only book by her that I've read, so I'm excited to read all of her other books. I have all of them except Sea of Tranquility, which I will be purchasing before the end of this vlog project because that book comes out on March 28th, and I've already pre-ordered the soft cover, so I'm excited to get it. Emily St. John Mandel, if you don't know, um, was born in British Columbia, Canada, and she for a time uh, lived around Canada, but she also has lived in the United States, and I think she currently lives in Brooklyn, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so the first book that she wrote takes place in Montreal, where she was living at the time. And that book is Last Night in Montreal, which was published in 2009, which will be the first book that I'm going to be reading by her. I believe this book is more along the line of the like crime mystery sort of genre. I'd say more probably a mysterious element. Um, when I found it in my bookstore, I believe it was in the thriller mystery section. Um, most of her books are not, but I believe this one was, if I'm not mistaken. I think another one that was as well was the next book in the publication order, which is The Singer's Gun, which was published in 2010. This one is also billed as a suspense crime mystery sort of novel. I do believe that these two books, of course, are probably going to be much more literary than the usual like mystery thriller fare, which is much more fast paced. Um, and less uh, maybe wordy. <laughs> I'm not really sure about that, but I, I'm expecting so, judging from what I know of Station Eleven. So um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty sure I found these two books in the thriller section of my bookstore. The next book that she had published was The Lola Quartet in 2012. Um, I think this one takes place in New Orleans, and the only reason I think that is because of the vibe that the cover gives me. Um, and the word Lola kind of sounds like Nola, which is uh, sort of like a shorthand for New Orleans, Louisiana. So I think it does, but I'm not exactly sure. This one, I am not really sure what the premise is. I haven't read any of the backs of these books. Um, I just bought them because I liked Station Eleven and I really wanted to delve into her work. Um, Maybe in the bookstore I might have glanced at the back, but I really, I have no idea what it's about. Um, but this one was in the literary fiction sec section, so um, I'm expecting it to be that way. Next published in 2014 was Station Eleven. Now, this one also has a somewhat of a, like, thrillery-ish vibe, like a mystery element to it. It is a post-pandemic sort of a novel and a, a pandemic happens in this novel it's about so much more than that but it does have this sort of suspenseful mysterious thing that happens in it and um I remember really liking it and I'm curious to see if I get anything different out of it this time uh, maybe I'll like it more I don't know and then the next book that was published was The Glass Hotel in 2020 um, I love the cover. I think of all of her books, this is my favorite cover of any of her books. Uh, I hear this one is not liked as much as Station Eleven, and I don't know if that's fair or not. I don't like to, I don't know if other people do this or not, but I don't like to judge a book that comes after a book that is well-loved by those standards. And what I mean, what I mean is, I think all books should be judged on their own merit. The story should be judged on its own merit, in my opinion. It shouldn't be compared to any other story. Um, is the writing as good as Station Eleven? I don't know. We'll see. Um, and, but I'm curious to see if I like it or not, uh, based on what other people have said about it. And then, of course, Sea of Tranquility um, is her newest novel, which was published in 2022. Um, I'm waiting for the soft cover, like I said. It comes out at the end of March. I have pre-ordered it. I'm really excited to get it. Um, I think this one takes place in like a either present scenario and future scenario or past and future scenario. I'm not really sure, but um, I believe this book is like a follow-up to some other book. I don't know if it's a follow-up to Station Eleven or if it's something else. Um, but like I said, I, I've seen people talk about it, but I haven't really paid close attention um, because I don't really want it spoiled for me. So I'm excited to get to that one too. 
Um, but like I said, first up is going to be Last Night in Montreal. So let's get into this vlog and see how I get on with the rest of Emily St. John Mandel's catalog. Okay, I finished Last Night in Montreal. This was published, like I said, in 2009. Um, and I found it, I believe, in the thriller mystery section of my bookstore. Um, and yeah, it does have a really very interesting unfolding. And it does unfold in a very um, revealing way. And I wouldn't exactly call it a mystery. I wouldn't call it a thriller for sure. It does have some sort of a crime element though, so that might be why it's in there, in that section. I'm not really sure. Um, so it's about this woman named Lilia who has um, left her boyfriend, who she was living with for a short time, or maybe the longest time that she's lived anywhere, I think. Um, and his name is Eli, and she just abruptly leaves, and he uh, decides to follow her because he wants to know if she's okay. Um, and he tracks her down in Montreal, where he goes looking for her and cross paths with this girl who has sent him a letter telling him she's there. And um, her name is Michaela. And most of the story of Eli is involved with Michaela trying to find out where Lilia is because he, he knows she's there in Montreal. Um, and he and he knows Michaela knows where she is, but Michaela is playing this cagey game with him, asking him to tell her a story that Lilia should have told him about what happened to her father, Michaela's father. Uh, because Michaela's father was a private detective, and it turns out that Lilia, when she was a very young girl, was abducted by her father and taken away uh, from her mother and younger brother, older brother. Um, and the reason the father did this um, unfolds throughout the story. And what I liked about this story is it was told in like three different, three, is it three? Probably, well, a few different timelines. And it jumps back and forth between them. Um, I was not confused ever about where I was in the timeline. And I really liked that structure. I liked seeing um, how it unfolded in that way and how slowly uh, all of the 
I would say, not really mysteries, but the things you're wondering about, how they unfold in the story. And I thought it was really good. I thought the writing was really good. I'm giving it four stars. I think I gave Station Eleven four stars too. It's a completely different story than Station Eleven. Um, and like I said, I don't like to judge stories based on other stories that I've liked by an author. Um, and I like that she has that versatility to do different things like that. So yeah, this if this was her first published novel, obviously, if this was the first book she ever wrote, like, wow, kudos to her. I would love to know how many books she wrote before this that didn't get published, um, because I think it's pretty accomplished for uh, a first-time publication. Uh, I really liked it. Uh, I thought it was really interesting, the dynamic between the characters and the dynamics between the timelines. I loved how um, we see Lilia as a little girl and we understand why it is that she can't stay in one place for a very long time. And I liked the way um, Eli's whole goal was to just make sure she was okay. And um, yeah, all the characters were really interesting and they revealed themselves in such unique ways. So I really liked it. I thought it was good. So next up is 2010's The Singer's Gun. Um, not sure what to expect from this one, but I do believe it also is a suspense, crimey sort of book in some way. So I'm excited to see what it's about. So on to that one. Okay, so I read The Singer's Gun. Um, I really, really like this one, too. Um, I don't know why these books aren't talked about more and why more people haven't read them, maybe? I'm not really sure. I think that I, read, I watched an um, interview with Emily St. John Mandel recently where she said, you know, she was really floundering before she wrote Station Eleven before that book, like, became popular. And uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it, maybe she didn't have really good marketing or something because these two books were actually really good, I thought. Um, maybe they were marketed as thrillers and they shouldn't have been, although they do have some sort of crime element. I mean, they're books based on sort of criminal activities. Hmm, I'm not really sure. I think they should have been marketed as uh, literary fiction, maybe, if they weren't. Uh, otherwise, I'm not really sure. Because, okay, this story is about a man who his parents, he grows up with his parents who run this illegal business, um, importing stolen goods, I guess. And um, so he sort of has that mindset about going about his life in that way, that he's going to 
work in a field like that but then he decides he doesn't want that life he wants like a, just a regular like office job life i guess and so but he gets it through illegal means and his cousin grew up with him her family um, decided to go back to the country where they came from and she and they left her there basically and she grew up with his family but then she really embraced that uh life of illicit activities um and like last night in montreal this book has a really interesting timeline structure where it it jumps around from present to past in these various points um which i really am digging i like that um, along with these two characters, the other sort of mainish character is a detective, like a FBI-ish type person, although that's not the department she works for, who is um, trying to get, uh, trying to find him, the main character, whose name is Anton, um, and trying to find his cousin, Arya, and pin the um, illicit things that they've done on them, which is like selling forged documents, basically. <clears throat> and Anton, trying to have a regular life, gets married and goes, um, he gets married and he, it's not really the thing for him. He, this life that he is trying to build is falling apart because it's not really in him, in his bones, I guess. I mean, he's not really good at living a normal, regular life. Um, he's told a lot of lies. He's done a lot of things that he's not proud of. And the, I think the whole story is about this sort of moral ambiguity that we inhabit as human beings. <clears throat> and it's all about, um, like, the choices that we make and how uh, morality plays into those choices. And sometimes we think we're doing a good thing when we're really basing our behavior on uh, nature and nurture. <laughs> and um, so no matter what kind of decision we make we we're in that morally ambiguous point of decision making um where we default to the behaviors we're used to i guess at least that's what i got out of it but i really liked it it was a really interesting build up um and I, what i like about both of these stories is that they're not exactly closed ended like there's a lot of space at the end of the stories where you can sort of be like, what happened to them? What, um, you know, did did Anton actually um, find a way out of the situation that he is in? Um, because it leads you to the climax, and then there's not really much of a resolution, and I don't hate it. I really don't mind that sort of a thing. So if you're looking for resolutions in books that are satisfying to you, being everything's all buttoned up and zipped up, these books are probably not going to be your favorite. But if you don't mind an open end, I think you would really like them. I also wanted to mention that in this book, there's a mention of a, what they call a figurehead, which goes on the front of a ship, um, of a, a female character that the that Anton's father, who has received this stolen good to sell, is restoring it. And he mentions that he had sold it at one point and had received it back. And the th interesting thing about that is that that figurehead, I believe, is the headboard of Eli in Last Night in Montreal. And so it, it, it was described in very, very similar terms of what the female figure looked like. In the interview I saw with Emily St. John Mandel, she did mention she does have connections in her novels. And so uh, she's sort of like trying to set up this multiverse, I guess. And that is a connection I saw, and I recognized it immediately. And I recognized it before I saw that interview. So now I'm really excited to read the other books that she wrote because I'm interested to see as I go forward through them, do I recognize what those connections are um, when I see them. So that's fun. That said, I really liked it. Um, I'm giving it four stars, like last night in Montreal, and I'm really looking forward to reading the next one, which is Lola Quartet. Now, I did read the back of the book for Lola Quartet, and I did say that I thought it might be in, taking place in New Orleans, but it doesn't. It takes place in Florida, but it's not far off. Um, it does have something to do with jazz, though. So I'm really looking forward to getting into that. So that's the next book.
Okay, I just finished the Lolo Quartet last night. Um, oh, I wanted to give this book five stars so bad because it was so close, but it just didn't deliver like that final emotional punch for me, but I am giving it four and a half stars. Uh, wow. I really, really liked this book, and I, and I want to read it off the cover here. Somebody from the Minneapolis Star Tribune said that this was an ingeniously constructed lit literary thriller. Now, apart from the thriller part, <laughs> I would say it is a an ingeniously constructed literary suspense novel of sorts. Um, thriller? Not really. Because the sort of hmm, thrilling payoff wasn't exactly there. However, it's so intricate. This is what I love about Emily St. John Mandel. And what I'm finding in all of her books is that she has several characters and we hear from all of them. We get all of their points of view at various stages, but she jumps around back and forth through time, through um, character, and you get this like interesting puzzle and the way she fits it all together, this like structure that she creates is just really incredible. And I wish that I could figure out how I could do that as a writer, because it's like just so interesting. It's so intriguing and it keeps me interested in the story. Uh, I just really like that back and forth going around to each, you know, to specific characters where it makes sense for them to be. And when they're in the story, they add so much to the story. Like they have a very specific purpose in that part that just brings it all together. It's like this really interesting weaving puzzle. I really am jealous, actually, to be honest with you. I want to be able to write like that. Um, so this story does not take place in New Orleans. <laughs> um, but it does have a person who plays, well, several people who play music. So it's told from this point of view, mostly from a, a guy named Gavin throughout, probably like the whole first part is his point of view. And um, he, when he was in high school, was a part of this jazz quartet called the Lola Quartet. And they would play with these other three uh, kids in his school uh, and they're pretty well known and pretty good. Like all of them were really good and could could go on if they wanted to in their music career. But Gavin did not. He decided to go to New York City and become a news reporter where he falls from grace, um, basically. And his life uh, sort of crumbles into ruins. And then when that happens, he uh, goes back home. And what he finds from his sister is that this girl he dated in high school had a child and disappeared uh, in their, at the end of their senior year, or his senior year. She left this town, she disappeared, she ran away, basically. And he believes that the, ch the child is his. And from there, it, it just becomes this, like, suspense novel about this girl, Anna. And is the child his? Is the child in danger? Is Anna in danger? She's done something. She's done something that has put her in danger, and she's been sort of living in disguise and and hiding. Um, and Gavin just wants to make sure she's okay and make sure this child is okay because he believes the child is his. And so he's searching for her. He goes back and he searches for her, and he touches base with all of the people who used to be a part of the Lola Quartet, and their lives have gone in vastly different directions um, and not in great ways. And so he uh, has to sort of like come to terms with how everybody's life sort of went off the rails or in a direction that wasn't expected, how none of them really stuck with music, although it does play a role in the book still with some of those characters. Um, but Anna, who was the sister of one of the quartet members, um, she sort of gets in a relationship with a kind of semi-famous jazz musician that Gavin knows in New York City, but he doesn't know that they were together. But there's like this whole mystery involved in it and how it unravels and what happens to Anna, what happens to the child. Um, we learn who the father is of the child 
and it doesn't have a happy ending. Um, I love that about her books as well. They're very up in the air, like they're very cl um, open. They're left open because, I mean, our lives are never done until they're done, right? Like there's never an ending until we're no more. And I like that. It's realistic. Um, and and do you always wonder at the end, like, well, what happens? Like, what happens to Gavin? What happens to Anna? What happens to everybody else in the story? Um, just, I love that way of writing, and I just really loved it. I thought it was excellent. I thought the writing was really good. The way it wove together was really great. Really liked the ending. I didn't so much like the climax. I feel like it wasn't really a climax, as I would expect of a story like it. Um, but other than that, it was excellent, so easy four and a half stars. Now I'm on to Station Eleven, which I have read before, um, but I'm really excited to read it again after reading these first uh, three books that she wrote to see if it hits me differently. Um, I do remember I like the puzzly aspect of that and the back and forthness of that as well, and I really like that um, structure, and I really, really want to write like that. So, on to Station Eleven. Okay, so I finished Station Eleven, which is the fourth book, again. Um, I've read this before, and I think I gave it, like, four stars the first time, and I think I'm also going to give it four stars this time. So, if you don't know, this book is about a traveling theater group and orchestra, basically, after a um, pandemic sweeps across at least the United States. I don't know if they really... Yeah, the world. I, I, there are parts that take place in other parts of the world. So, yeah, this pandemic sweeps across the world, much like past history. And um, wipes out pretty much everybody and centers around this girl named Kirsten 
who is one of the actors in this troupe. But when she was a little girl, she was an actor. And while she was acting, right before the pandemic hit, a the lead actor of this play, King Lear, that she was a part of, um, died on stage and um, was a good close friend of hers at the time and gifted her these couple of comic books that were called Station Eleven or you know, they had to do with Station Eleven, uh, which is part of the comic book so story. And so it follows her um, through as the troop is uh, migrating from one place to another. And then they come to find out that a couple of people that they were hoping to hook up with again from their troop um, went missing. And basically, it is because of a man called the Prophet who... Um, uh is like a sort of very religious but like takes whatever he wants sort of kind of a person you know what I mean and um yeah centers around that storyline there are also as in Emily St. John Mandel fashion other storylines that all weave together into this one and the one thing about this story that isn't as successful I find reading them in order all of her books is that these storylines don't seem to wind together as tightly, in my opinion, as the previous three books. Um, but I'm still giving it four stars because I really like the writing, I really like the story, um, and the characters are really good. I think the Prophet is an interesting character, um, and I like the incorporation of the comic books into the story, and I love the idea of a tra traveling like theater group um, performing for survivors of a plague. Um, I just think that's very interesting. The one storyline of the man who tried to save the life of the actor who died on the stage, his is the one that doesn't seem to weave into the rest of them as, as well as I think um, in her previous book she's done. So that's interesting to me. But I really like the story still. I think it's a really good book. I love the character. I still like the writing. Um, it's a strong four stars. It's not like, you know... It's not like an average book. It's a very good book. Um, people say that Gla The Glass Hotel, which is the next book up for me, isn't as good as this. And I don't know, because the books previous to this were were better than this one, in my opinion. So did she go downhill after that third book? Is she, like, going backward as far as her writing? I'm not really sure, but I'm excited to get into The Glass Hotel next anyway. Um, yeah, here we go. There's a ship out there. That big ship over there.
for watching her cat. Oh, wow. Go Leona. Yeah. That's no woman, that's my mother. Okay, so I finished the Glass Hotel, and I have to say, um, I understand why if you came into Emily St. John Mandel's writing during Station Eleven, and then you read this, why you might not like her books, or why you might not like this book, because this one is much more like her first three books than it is like Station Eleven, though it does have similarities. Um, not to mention the characters that are in this book that are in Station Eleven, but the sort of back and forth through time, multiple timelines, various character point of view, structure, that's all the same as Station Eleven. But the intrigue and sort of, I don't want to say mystery because it's not really a mystery. It's definitely more intrigue, sort of like um, working out what's going on as a complete timeline. That is all much more like her first three books, which are decidedly more like in the crime genre. I think this one is also in the crime genre um, because it centers around a Ponzi scheme, which that Ponzi scheme actually affected one of the very minor characters in the Lola Quartet by Emily St. John Mandel. So it, um, it has shown up in another previous book. Um, but the, the major thing about this book is that there are characters from Station Eleven that are in this, particularly Leon Provant, who was the shipping tycoon um, in that book, who you don't really see, but you hear about him a lot from Miranda's point of view. And Miranda sort of is in this book, too, in a small way uh, in The Glass Hotel. Um, but the main characters besides um, Leon Provant are mainly a, a woman named Vincent and her brother named Paul. So at the beginning, Vincent is plummeting from this container ship into the ocean and she disappears. And her brother Paul um, is sort of another main character connected to her, obviously, in the story, but he plays a completely different um, role <laughs> than having anything to do with container ships. So... What I loved about this book, and I actually really, really liked it, because I really liked her first three books, and it was very reminiscent to those. What I liked about it is the just that, that the all these different characters and different story lines um, converge at the end, and you get a full picture as you go through the narrative. I really, really like that structure. That, that structure also exists in Station Eleven, so it's not like that book didn't have it. But if you're coming to Emily St. Man St. John Mandel with that sort of like speculative fiction, sci-fi, quote-unquote, sort of element, if you're looking for that in her work, most of her work isn't that. Um, I have a feeling Sea of Tranquility is going to sort of be that, because I think it takes place also in the future with like moon colonies or something, if I'm rem remembering what people say about it. But that's it. Station Eleven and that book are the only books of the six that she's written that do that. Um, all the rest are more like crime drama slash intrigue sort of books. So this one, like I said, mostly centers around a Ponzi scheme. And Vincent is a part of that unknowingly because she marries this man named Jonathan Alkaitis, who is the sort of instigator and lead character of that Ponzi scheme that he is conducting, which is ripping off a ton of wealthy people, including in this book, Leon Provant. So the interesting thing about this book, and one of the things I like about Emily St. John Mandel, what is that? She has this like multiverse thing going on where like there's container ships in this book. There were container ships in a previous book that she talked about. Um, there what There's the Ponzi scheme, which she talked about in a pre previous book. But there's also mentions of things from Station Eleven. So, like, for for instance, there are discussions between Paul, Vincent, and their friend Melissa about what would happen if um, the world ended. Uh, what would happen if the Georgia flu 
um, wasn't contained, if it hadn't been contained. And the Georgia flu, if you read uh, Station Eleven, is the flu that got out of control and ended, ended society. So this book is like a different time. It's like a different universe with the same elements. Like, it's the what if that never happened story. Um, and so that's really cool. I like that idea. I like the way she brings all of that stuff together. And I like the writing style. I really like this sort of crime intrigue thing. I like the dual many timelines. I like the back and forth through time, jumping from character to character, and then having to piece it all together, and then finding out at the end how it all fits. Um, that's just a thing that's right up my alley. If you're not into that, you're not going to like this book. If you're not into that, you're not going to like her first three books, um, because they all do that to, in various ways, in different uh, points. You know, there's different stories, obviously. But it's very cool, and I'm interested in reading the next book, um, sea, sea of Tranquility, which is her most recent and latest book, because I know that there are other characters. I know, for example, that Vincent and her friend um, Marella or something, I can't remember exactly what her name is, are in that book or have a timeline in that book. I know that there's um, things about that book that relate to her previous books, too. So I'm interested to see what she does with all of that and how the characters fit in or what characters she uses. Um, yeah, so that's the next book up, and I'm really looking forward to it. So that's the last one in my project, so let's get to it. So I finished Sea of Tranquility by Emily St. John Mandel. This is the last book um, in the vlog series and the last book that Mandel has had published. Um, so I really think that if you didn't read any other books by her, you'd probably either be lost or extremely confused about this story. Um, because I think that reading the other books that characters um, from those stories that are in this book were in, would help you understand the story more fully. <clears throat> Particularly in the case of Vincent and Morella, they have a very complicated story um, in The Glass Hotel that only part of it plays into this book. So I think Mandel does her best to uh, get it across who they are in the book, but I think that it would be s far more successful um, for the reader if you had read The Glass Hotel. So if you didn't read it and you read this, um, you would not, you would not care as much maybe about Vincent and Morella and their story. Um, but those are only two of the characters in this book. There are other characters. So this book, um, is sort of like a 
traveling through time book, and it does in fact have a time travel element. It takes place from 1912 through like the 2200s uh, of, of Earth's timeline. So um, it takes place on Earth and it takes place on moon colonies as well. But um, the four or five stories, I can't remember right now off the top of my head, is it four or five? I think it's four stories that are sort of their own timeline elements within this book are all bound together through one or two people in the story who travel through time to these various locations. And what they're doing is trying to find the source of this sort of glitch that happens in the time continuum that brings all four of these uh, stories together into one moment, um, which I think is a really cool thing. And it's a really interesting structure. And I really liked it a lot. Um, I think that this book has a lot of the elements that Mandel's first three books um, well, actually, all of her books have, but it is also a completely new thing. So here's the thing about it. I really liked it. I, I think it's a four-star book easy. Um, I think that if you read Station Eleven and then you read The Glass Hotel and you were disappointed in The Glass Hotel, it's because you probably didn't read her first three books and maybe that's not the kind of book that you like because they're all along that intrigue line. However, I will say, Station Eleven may have been sort of a jumping off point to lead to a book like this for Mandel, because it does have the structure of all of her other books, all of them, all five of the other ones, have the similar sort of back and forth through time, through different characters' perspectives and places, weaving together into one story element. It's all the same. She That is her thing. And that's what I love about reading a person's work from the beginning to the end, is because you can recognize this through line of how they like to work, what it is about them and their work that um, really stands out as their thing and as if is um, sort of defining for them. And I think that is the thing for Mandel so far. But I think that Station Eleven was a jumping off point for this because it was the most unlike the others as far as speculative fiction. Um, that one, though it was based on Earth, had a lot of um, pandemic, post-apocalyptic speculation um, in it. Whereas this one has even more of that. This one is much more science fiction based than any of the other ones. However, it does have all of that intrigue that all of her other books have as well. So I really liked it. Um, I don't think it was my favorite. So if I had to choose a favorite, I'm still thinking that the Lola Quartet was probably my favorite one so far of anything she's written. I think Station Eleven and Glass Hotel were probably next in line, although I think I liked The Glass Hotel more than I liked Station Eleven. <clears throat> this one, and I think, ties with Station Eleven. So I think all of her books are good. I haven't rated any of them five stars, and I haven't rated any of them under four stars. I think she's a consistent writer. I think she has a style that I get along with. I think her story structures are really interesting. I like them. Um, I like that she uses different characters, but there are also motifs that she likes to use, particularly... Um, ships on the water. Um, music plays a big role in her uh, books. Um, definitely mystery. There's definitely definitely um, characters that are um, burdened in some way through um, the through their interactions with other characters, which I really like. They have really complicated relationships with each other, but I, and I also really like that back and forth through time and being in the characters' different environments. Um, and how they all weave together. I just think it's extremely interesting. I love that sort of a thing. I would love to be able to write like that. Um, so yeah, that's the end of my vlog. I had a really, really good time reading Emily St. John Mandel's books. Uh, I'm looking forward to whatever she comes out with next. I don't know if it'll be much more um, in line with her first three books and The Glass Hotel, or if it'll be more um, speculative like Station Eleven and Sea of Tranquility. But in any case, I think that she's a definite... Uh, favorite, I would say, at this point for me. I really like her books. I like her style. I think she's an awesome person too. I'm looking forward to seeing what she does next. So I hope you liked the vlog. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate it. And I will see you back here on whatever my next video is. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you liked the footage of the sculpture park and um, the ocean, which was awesome to see. 
And um, I'll see you back here next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.